As wrestling fans, we've experienced some of the most insane moments and most terrifying tragedies over the years. And when you're a company that's been around as long as WWE has, there's bound to be a ton of conspiracy theories out there. Today I went through a rabbit hole of WWE conspiracy theories on Reddit, and I wanted to show you guys the more interesting ones that may actually be true. What's up guys, it's Theory Kaze here. If you're enjoying the video, please like and subscribe, and also comment below if you happen to think any of these are true, or if you thought of one that no one else is talking about. But without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> So I thought I'd address the elephant in the room first and start off with the Chris Benoit conspiracy theories as this is the one I saw the most. The story goes that Kevin Sullivan, who was a former booker in WCW and also a former wrestler, booked his then wife Nancy to be a valet for Chris Benoit. However, the two ended up falling in love, causing Nancy to divorce from Kevin and she went on to marry Chris Benoit. The conspiracy is that Kevin Sullivan was the one who committed the tragic acts in 2007 instead of Chris Benoit, and he was actually framed. The story gets even deeper when you find out that Nancy's passing was actually announced on her Wikipedia page about a day before this all takes place. It's also worth noting that Kevin Sullivan had a Satanist gimmick while he was a wrestler, so a lot of fans are connecting this to some type of sacrifice. Now, since I was 10 years old, I've always found this theory incredibly creepy. Don't get me wrong, I find the Kevin Sullivan part to be completely untrue. However, someone actually did predict Nancy's passing on Wikipedia 14 hours before she passed. Not only that, but it was two revisions, one from Australia and the other one from Connecticut. And if you guys don't know, Connecticut is where WWE headquarters are. Now, I'm not suggesting any foul play was done by WWE or anything of that nature, I just find it incredibly strange that such a prediction was made and they can't really find out who did it. Also a few weeks before this happened, during One Night Stand 2007, Vince McMahon had a backstage promo where he was saying something was eating at him and he felt something horrible was going to happen and he was actually alluding to his limousine blowing up a few weeks later, but it just so happens that the Benoit tragedies also happened around that same time. Now that something really bad is gonna happen to me and it really makes watching anything from around this time period a bit grim so the next conspiracy i found was vince mcmahon sabotaging aew's roster now over the years vince mcmahon has proven he'll stop at nothing to destroy his competition he'll also stop at nothing to save a quick buck which is why for the past four years wwe has been releasing talent at a pretty shocking rate Stars like Bray Wyatt, Braun Strowman, Sting, and Rusev were all abruptly released with WWE's reasoning being quote unquote budget cuts. However, each year they did this, WWE would also manage to bring in record breaking profits. This has led some fans to believe that WWE purposefully released these talents in order for AEW to sign them all and overbloat their roster. One of fans' biggest gripes with AEW right now is that they have too much talent on their roster. An issue that an up and coming company may not foresee, but for someone who's been around as long as Vince McMahon, he's actually been through the same exact scenario and he's also seen the same scenario play out with WCW signing too many major contracts. During a shareholders meeting, he even alluded to giving AEW more talent for their roster. Now, I obviously can't confirm if this was true or not. However, I do believe that it may be some truth to it. As with any business, they go through budget cuts in order to maximize profit. However, the people that were released are people that Vince McMahon historically hasn't known how to book. And that leads me to believe that this was a two birds and one stone move by Vince McMahon. I don't know, what do you guys think? I could be giving him too much credit. Another theory I saw posted a lot was that Brett was in on the Montreal screw job. Reasoning behind the conspiracy is that it ended up working well for the WWE in the long run. Vince McMahon went on to be one of the biggest heels in WWE history and Brett was able to go to WCW with a huge babyface push. It just so happens that WCW fumbled the bag with Bret Hart. One post even mentioned how the cameras were able to film everything perfectly. Now this is a theory that I can't really subscribe to. Although wrestling has had some insane and even shocking storylines, I don't think having your biggest draw at the time leave the company for your direct competitor was ideal for Vince at any point. 
And as far as everything being filmed perfectly, there's always a camera crew at ringside filming everything, so it's possible that someone in the production truck knew about the screw job beforehand and knew where to cut to during the broadcast. Wrestlers are also habitual storytellers, and by that I don't mean they lie a lot, but they do tell stories a lot. I feel like after nearly 30 years, this would have been a story that was told. The only thing about this theory I can say is 100% factual is that WCW dropped the ball with Bret Hart. So I saw this theory going around that Vince McMahon forced Daniel Bryan to retire because his popularity was interfering with Roman Reigns' push. And they go on by listing a few examples like fans cheering Daniel Bryan's name during the main event of TLC where it was Roman Reigns versus Sheamus and Roman Reigns' infamous Royal Rumble victory. Now after winning the main event of WrestleMania, Daniel Bryan had a series of injuries that took him out for months at a time. The initial injury was an issue with his neck. He was clear to return from that, but then was soon injured again during his IC title reign, this issue being related to his history with concussions. Now from the fans' perspective, Bryan was seemingly fine, and he even hinted at being able to still wrestle. But if there's a chance, then there's a chance, right? And this added even more fuel to the theory. So after the aforementioned Benoit tragedies, WWE faced a lot of scrutiny about their concussion protocol, and this caused WWE to crack down significantly on anything dealing with health and safety issues. With that being the case, and also consider the fact that Edge was forced to retire a few years before this, stating that if he took the wrong bump, he could have been paralyzed, I think Daniel Bryan's retirement was a way to rid themselves of any liability if he were to continue in the ring. And the whole thing felt like, you may be healthy, but you're not healthy enough for our standards. However, the theory goes even deeper, with fans speculating that the reason he returned was because he threatened to wrestle somewhere else. So I do think that was the reason he was able to return. However, I don't think Roman Reigns had anything to do with his retirement. Before I get to the last one though, let me know if I've missed any ones. And if you're a fan of wrestling content, consider subscribing. So this last one has me a bit stumped. In April of 2023, CM Punk visited a Raw show in Chicago. It was reported that he briefly met with Triple H, as well as speaking to a few other talents in passing. However, Punk was escorted out the building by security after Vince McMahon found out that he was there. Now during this time, Punk was still on his hiatus from AEW after the brawl out incident. Punk later returned to AEW joining Collision, continuing to ruffle feathers, and was released from the company following another incident involving Jack Perry. And the theory goes that Triple H told CM Punk to sabotage AEW and get himself fired. Now, the only real evidence to support this is the fact that CM Punk did meet with Triple H briefly, and he was also reported to clear the air with a few stars, including The Miz. Now, to me, this seems like he could have possibly been clearing the air to see if there was a possible opportunity for him there. However, I don't think Triple H would just outright tell him to go sabotage the company. I also think a lot of things had to go right in order for CM Punk to make his return to WWE. For instance, the head doctor that he initially complained about and then was later sued by couldn't still be there. He was fired in 2022. Vince McMahon had to no longer be in control of creative. He was removed from creative in late 2023. So at the time of CM Punk meeting Triple H, Vince was still over involved in the company and Vince had no interest in working with CM Punk. So no, I don't think that the theory is true. However, I do think this was a major turning point in getting CM Punk back in WWE. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it. This was a pretty interesting video to make, and I would definitely consider making a part two. But instead of Reddit, I kind of want to know what you guys are thinking, and if you guys could even convince me on some of your theories. So leave them in the comments below, I'm definitely reading them all. Again, if you're a fan of wrestling to any degree, I cover all types of aspects of wrestling on my channel. So be sure to like and subscribe, I'll see you guys next week, and until next time, put your seatbelt on and keep it kaze.